from everybody else. My deep ball, it has a little secret sauce to it, man. <laughs> I never get too high, never get too low, but just keep moving. The, the whole story is Carlos never beat me in any kind of sports in, in, in high school. Zen, what were your takeaways, uh, would you say, as far as from the Bengals Bucks game? Are we going good, bad, or ugly? Like, what, what are we starting? Are let's we start with, with the. Good? Let's start with the ugly. Let's get in. Let's get into it. Let's start with the ugly. All right, the we gotta ugly. end on the good note. <laughs> All right, so the ugly is Jackson Carmen is who I thought he was. I guess like at this point right now, he's not ready to. From now to week one, he won't be ready to start an NFL game. <laughs> like I just I can't see it right now unless he just comes out and just does something magnificent, but. Um, he he wasn't terrible or anything like that. It's just um, we don't have enough time. But there's a couple plays that I w- I would like to point out where he just didn't. He doesn't. He's not. He he hasn't figured out how to get from the tackle position to the guard position. All right. So that uh, the kid Vogel uh, is is has to be cut <laughs> at some point. <laughs> that was probably one of the like I I I didn't think they were going to leave him in that long. He he was not he didn't look good at all. Um, aside from that, I thought that there were some things, some calls and stuff that went our way, like penalties and everything like that, where there was some pass protection that wasn't really good, but it was a penalty. I forgot what the what the play was. Because yeah, there so, were a so, lot of penalties and Bucks it, fans were getting upset. It, it, it was a <laughs> lot of penalties and uh, on a lot of them plays that got penalized. They, those were a lot of plays that you know, like when in favor where guys were beating so well. I was actually listening to Anthony Kazenza um, on, you know, on Sensi Jungle with us too. And he started off his show where he's kind of pointing out some of the places that I'm talking about where it probably gets swept under the mat because it didn't really count, you know, but there were some plays that didn't look really good. Those are the the things that I think everybody was looking at offensive line play, right? So that was the main thing that I was checking for. I do have a confession. I couldn't see the whole entire game. I'm walking through New York, like, and they had me doing some stuff with this campaign, and I was able to, like, catch in and out. So I had to go watch a replay. But as we know, like, all 22s, I had somebody send me, like, the most important plays, all this stuff like that. So I didn't get to see the live game. So that that kind of messed me up a little bit. But I did grasp a lot of the different – like when you get into the good, I think I'll have a lot more. <laughs> right. No, nah, no, nah, that's facts. I think like as far as for me in terms of, of some of the bad, obviously some of the fumbles early on in the in the game, it seemed like there were like two times where the Bengals uh could have put some more points on the board. And the first fumble from Samaj P. Ron, I literally was in line, uh, I believe getting some nachos or something. And we looked up and I was like, let's get it. And then he got stripped. And so there were there were a lot of turnovers in that mm-hmm. aspect of it. I would probably also say another negative for me. It's hard to honestly, it was it was a mixed bag. There was the one where it was, I think, if I'm not mistaken, it was like a fumble interception. It was a really weird play. Like right, honestly, right. the yeah, interception, was, and then he goes, he starts running, and then he fumbles the ball, but then fumbles um, the ball back to us, like yeah, right back to us. So uh, it, it turns out to be a highlight play, but that wasn't a good play. That really wasn't a good play, like you said. And then um for that, me, that was Mike Thomas, wasn't it? Yeah, it was Mike Thomas. Yeah, I think it was Mike Thomas. Another thing for me, I probably say if we got to talk about, I guess, the negatives, I would probably say there was a lack of depth at the receiver position after Trent Taylor and Auden Tate left the game. It just seemed like they were just forcing it to Trent Irwin, like every single play. Ir- Irwin, like, a dog, was- though. He is a dog, but it was yeah. like that I, don't, catch, I, thought that was the, I thought that was the best catch of the game. The number one that, fourteen where he catches and he were, gets smacked. They were trying to force it to like number fourteen, but like after a while, it was like, and and you're right, Irwin is a dog, but it was like they were throwing up like Megatron jump. Like he's not a tall dude, right? So you're not gonna expect like him to kind of Randy Moss a catch, and at some points it felt like they were kind of forcing it to him. Uh, but, you know, I definitely noticed the drop-off, I guess I could say, after the starters were out. Obviously, that's not really a cause of concern because we got the Migos, we got Auden Tate, uh, but it didn't seem like there was anybody really worth keeping 
after Auden Tate and Trent Taylor and I guess maybe Trent and Irwin, it didn't really seem like there was, you know, other guys that really made an impact. Um, that's all I really got for the the ugliness is just the turnovers, lack of depth at a receiver. I could complain about the quarterback. I wasn't the biggest fan of Kyle Shermer. When I looked at his his box score, it looks decent. But when I saw him in person, it was he threw the pick six. I'm gonna say one bad thing, but it's a good transition is Chris mm -hmm. Evans. Even Callahan alluded to this earlier today. He had a statement that said that Chris Evans needs to learn that he can't run like he used to in college. Some of those plays don't exist. I think it was kind of taken out of context a little bit because there are some plays where dudes are literally in a backfield and Chris Evans is still trying to juke and make a play. So he had he had four plays that were negative yardage. On those plays, I feel like he, you know, tried to make a bigger play. But the the good side of him, though, transitioning over to the good, is Chris Evans, like, I don't know if the plan for Joe Mixon is going to be like what they thought it was. If we're watching teams that go on Super Bowl runs and do really, really good things, they preserve, like, you know, like how they wore, um, what's your boy um, with the Rams, Gurley, how they ran him right. down. And Zach Taylor, when he first got here, that was one of the first things that he was talking about, keeping veterans fresh, giving guys days off. It's a bunch of super chats. I, I'm gonna get to, but Chris Evans was was out there balling. I, you know when you say he reminds you of Reggie Bush on one of our shows, he looked right. like Reggie Bush. He looked right. like Reggie Bush out there, and that's not to say he's Reggie Bush. He looked like him. He he played at that speed. It was not too big for him. He had a great interview after the game where he's saying like, "Man, when I got out there, them dudes was big." But then when the right. second string came out, I was like, yeah, that's more my speed right there. <laughs> I thought that was real, like, funny and authentic. But at the same time, he, he could catch like crazy. His run blocking grade from PFF was 74. It was third on the team out of, I think, eight different reps in pass blocking. Oh, no, actually four. So out of that, I just feel like that little bit of sample size lets us know that he can come in and fill that geo role right away. I don't know what their role is for P. Ryan early on, right? But right. – you got to think on third down, he probably be the first guy coming off. Like if Mixon doesn't get that that particular snap, Chris yeah. Evans is making a big, big campaign for him to be the GO right now. And I think the talent, like I was telling someone about Jackson Carmen, they was like, you got to let Carmen sit. I was like, listen, talent going to rise to the top no matter what you do. It doesn't matter what you do in life. Like if Chris Evans come out there balling, bro, Suit him like what? What are we? We're not holding on to nothing. Like, ain't we all trying to win right now? So, Chris Evans was a big, big, like boom. And there's, there's some other players I'm pretty sure you're going to reference. Yeah, before before I get into them, the other negatives that I forgot to mention: Billy Price didn't have a great impact on this game. Xavier Suafilo, I saw him in there super late. Didn't really see much from him in terms of him making a statement. Uh, the tackles obviously were bad as well, but we'll get into some of the other ones. But before we get into those, we, we do have some super chats to address real quick. 